Today, as I mentioned, we have our second to last lecture of the Great Lenten Lecture Series. Many times you've heard me say that after the Divine Services, the most important things, the thing that we do in this church is our church school. The education of the children is so, so important. So, Lilia Vershina, who is leading the church school, is here to talk to us about that very important ministry in the parish. So, we'll ask your, your attention. Uh, while while she is speaking, uh, and uh, if we'll just ask your attention while she's speaking, we won't go over any possible scenarios that could happen. I'm sure everything <laughs> will be just fine. So, without further ado, uh, let's welcome Lilia for her lecture. <coughs> Yeah, probably not. 
Or if priest says it, it's actually a great idea, can we consider it a blessing? Uh, probably not. So there, uh, what we consider in Orthodox Church priest blessing when person come to the priest and ask, uh, Father, please bless me for this and this. And uh, a priest blesses. So when somebody comes to me and suggests some idea, I always ask, uh, and he says, I got blessing, I ask, uh, did you, did a priest bless or it's really a blessing? So it's important that uh, our priest blesses all our decisions before we do anything at our church school. Uh, then next level, coordinator, which is myself. So it's more obvious about the priest, the role of the priest in the church school. It's more obvious the teachers who do the hard work. And, uh, and school, ch uh, church school is possible because we've got uh, teachers. But it's less obvious about the coordinator. So why do we need a coordinator at the church school? Uh, first of all, coordinator saves lots of energy for the priest. Uh, imagine uh, we have, say, seven uh, teachers, and each, each teacher would email, say, three emails per week. Six teachers, 18 emails per week. It's overwhelming, considering that Father Gregory oversees not only this ministry at church, but lots of other ministries. So I always ask teachers and parents, please forward all emails to me. What I do, I will make a review email, uh, a summary email with ballots, first, second, third. And Father Gregory replies, yes on first, no on second, yes on third. So it saves lots of energy. Uh, in addition, as I said, priest, the metaphor in terms of Google Maps is satellite view. Uh, a priest is not able to keep every tiny detail of every minute. Uh, ministry. It's just completely impossible. It's not physically possible. So a leader of each ministry has all these details in mind. So if you have any, if you have a question or you ask a blessing of the priest before talking to me, what happens? Father Gregory doesn't remember everything, and he says. Yes, it's a great idea, but then something comes up what he doesn't remember because he oversees so many things. And then I say, yes, but we have this and this at these days, so it's, it's impossible, we can't do it. Uh, to avoid this, uh, it's better to forward all emails to me and then I will make a summary, I will remind if needed, if I, if I see something, I need to remind something. And uh, so I will make a summary email uh, to the priest. So uh, a coordinator in church school is a mediator between parents, priests, and teachers. And finally, the role of the teachers, uh, it's obvious. Teachers uh, teach kids. Uh, uh, teachers also prepare kids for the church feast. Uh, for example, the youngers group, which is my favorite, it's so sweet to, to see, to be exposed, and to see uh, how teachers teach the youngest group. They learn uh, poetry, they learn song, in addition to the knowledge, uh, teachers actually uh, give their very good knowledge. So this is another role which, which teachers do. In addition to te teach, teaching, they also learn poetry, songs with the kids. And going back to the uh, Google Maps, teachers are city view. They are people who have very tiny detail of what is going on during the uh, church school, during the class. So in case you have questions, let's, let's speak uh, who you need to direct your, uh, your questions, priest, coordinator, or teachers. If you have questions which, are, which relate to a particular class, teachers are your best bet. Uh, if you have confidential questions related to your child, uh, you are very welcome to call to Father Gregory with your question. In case you have ideas, plannings, events, then the best bet is the coordinator. And I myself don't make any decisions on my own. If I get any ideas, I send email to the whole group. We've got a very nice group of teachers. They are very smart. We discuss it within the group. We consider all possible advantages, disadvantages, and then, then we make decisions in the whole group uh, together with Father Gregory. Father Gregory places it, and then we do something, do 
some changes at our school or something else. So if you bring your ideas to me, it doesn't mean that I say, no, we are not going to do it, or yeah, we are going to do it. What, I, what I, my next step is to email all teachers and Father Gregory, and then after we made, we made our group decision, we go forward. Classes. At our church school, uh, at, at each class we have two teachers, one teacher and one set, uh, substitute. It's a nice substitution mechanism. In case a teacher got sick or he is not in town, uh, we have a replacement. So we have two teachers per each class. Our youngest group, five to six years old group, this is my favorite because it's very sweet to teach, uh, to teach this young group. And myself, I started, uh, my participation in the church school started from teaching this group uh, because the best memory about the church school was related to this time when uh, my own son was five years old and I started teaching at school. So teachers for the Russian-speaking group are Sasha Pirozhenko and her assistant and substitute Svetlana Mitchell. Uh, English-speaking group of the same age, Monica and her assistant and substitute Laura. So what these teachers do, what this group do? Uh, teachers teach virtues, they support supported by crafts in order to make it uh, more available uh, for this level of age. Then teachers explain many of the major orthodox feasts and they again supported by crafts. In the end of each class, they have crafts. English-speaking uh, English group joins a Russian-speaking group and they do crafts together. But the lesson is, this is the only group where we have two languages. The reason why we have it, because English-speaking, some English, uh, all English-speaking uh, kids, they don't speak Russian, and some uh, Russian-speaking little ones don't speak English. So for that purpose, we needed uh, both languages for this age group because uh, uh, this age group people, uh, kids didn't start going to, uh, to to the school yet, and they were not exposed to English language too much. If mother is Russian speaking, so we needed uh, both languages for this group. And as I mentioned, this is the sweetest group at church school. You sh you should see how they teach. It's, re it's literally, unfortunately none of them is here to get this gratitude. Uh, you should see how they teach. It's literally from heart to heart of the kids. So what happens, usually I am sitting on a bench typing some church related emails during the church school because I don't teach or coordinate. And then I, I hear how they teach virtues and I have a feeling that I stop doing, some, doing something and I have a feeling I need to go to confession. So it's really age unrelated. So when I hear how they teach these virtues, these simple stories, it brings so so much like, oh, I need confession. I did it last week. So it's um, it, it's really touching. It, it touches any age. So uh, these classes are great. If you have a child of this age and you miss this school, you can't imagine how much you miss uh, if you miss. Because these teachers, Sasha and Sveta, they are so heartful people. And uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's an experience, quite an experience to see how they teach kids uh, in this age group. Uh, next age group, seven to eight years old group. Our class is all unique. They have, uh, so the class itself has its own how to put a personality specificity. So this group is most structured. Uh, it's a very interesting group. They have a textbook. They teach uh, based on law of God. Uh, the teachers for, uh, for this group, Yulia Paramonova and Olga Galakova. Before they had Andrew Radzianka, and it was so painful to lose him from school because he had an art of writing very short, concise emails. It's a, it's a very rare art. <laughs> I am not there yet. When I want to put all my ideas, it becomes long. He is able to put it into five sentences and to put all information which he needs. He had a great communication with parents. He was, he was very well organized. Uh, so
so he was an excellent teacher, but he stepped in, in a new position at church um, treasurer, the position of treasurer. And I can understand that his skills to be organized, to, uh, to be able to, con uh, to write concise emails, they needed there even more. So Oiga Belaka we replaced Andrew Radzianka for this age group. Thank you, Andrew. I'm taking this chance to thank for all your hard work you did this year. So thank you very much. And we got another, another very nice person, Olga Galakova, who is very reliable, very responsible uh, to replace uh, Andrew, to step up in Andrew's place. And experience. And experience too, yes, yeah, she taught before. She taught before in our school. Um, so, as I said, they have a textbook, The Law of God, they get homeworks, teachers remind them about the homeworks each week. Uh, and this group usually joins, uh, joins the youngest group uh, in the feast preparations. And finally, the oldest group, 9 to 12 year old group. The teacher for this group is Father Gregory, Jana substitutes him when he is not available because he, start, uh, he started to travel a lot and uh, we need a replacement for him, so Jana replaces Father Gregory. Before we had two languages for this group, Jana taught Russian and Father Gregory English, but uh, since we need to have two teachers per group, we can't do it anymore. Uh, we need to have two teachers and we don't have many teachers uh, at school, so we have just one English uh, language group in this age. So last year this group, uh, they studied the law of God by Serafim Slobodskoy and they had homeworks, they had textbook, uh, they had uh, tests, but this year we tried we try to try something new. So this year uh, we tried presentation. So each child is supposed to give two presentations per, presentation per year. And then kids discuss and ask questions. In case a child is not prepared, which I'm afraid happens quite often, Father Gregory uh, uh, has a discussion with the kids. They ask him uh, many different questions. So this is very nice that the oldest group in the church school is taught by Father Gregory. Uh, as if you remember, as I mentioned before, the second goal of the church school is to form orthodox identity and to have a priest as a teacher is the it's a great way to help kids to form orthodox identity when kids can have this model role in front of them. And we also do pilgrimages in order to reach the second goal to form kid or orthodox identity. And finally challenges at the church school. Church school is highly depends on parents' cooperation. If parents doesn't drive the kids, we can't do anything. So kids is not a, a, a lesson. Then driving to the services. Again, in this we depend on parents. Uh, then supporting Father Gregory's request to stay after the church school during the video, at least for the first part, uh, at least for one hour, so we can practically apply the knowledge which we just got from the lesson. Uh, another challenge, uh, church school, uh, Father Gregory uses to say that this is the, uh, after the liturgy, this is the most important ministry at the church. On the other hand, failures are not as visible and for this purpose sometimes it's harder to get cooperation. For example, if something happens and we didn't say bring, we don't bring food, then everybody can see it and this is a failure. Everybody can see it, people hungry and so on. If something fails, uh, like some, something fails at school, it's not that visible, it's not that obvious. For, um, because of this, it's, sometimes it's harder to get cooperation. On the other hand, consequences are long-term consequences, which you can't see tomorrow or right now, but you can see them later on. So this is another challenge uh, at church school. So uh, 
Well, that's it. If you have any questions about anything related to the church school, uh, myself, Dr. Gregory, or other teachers will be happy to reply your questions. Anyone have any questions for Lilia? No? <laughs> that's the first <laughs> Roman, this, this man here, his name is Roman, would like to ask a question. You may know him. Uh, how, how, does it, how does language go? Uh, English and Slovenian, do you have different groups? How do you... yeah, so one group, the youngest, they have two languages. Because at, at, this is the only age where we have kids who speak just one language. Either English or Russian. Uh, other ages, they all speak English. And... Uh, we don't have enough resources to teach, to teach both languages. We will be happy to, and we will do it as soon as we get uh, Russian-speaking teachers for these ages. But so far, we don't have resources. Um, for instance, also, we, are, we accommodate in the specific classrooms for the language that the child is most comfortable in. Uh, in Father Gregory's class, we have uh, this year we have implemented a, a different way uh, for children to, to learn, and that's uh, they do a presentation. Each child does a presentation uh, for a lesson. So during the school year, a couple of times they get a chance to present on a specific topic of their choice. And we have children who feel more comfortable speaking on a religious <coughs> topic in their language, be, be it Russian or English. And so we allow them to do it in their language because we have the teacher there who can immediately translate and, and uh, help children understand what is being uh, presented. Oh, so that's right. There was a presentation in Russian well. and Jean translated into English. Yeah, so we try to accommodate these needs in case child wasn't able. Usually it happens if mom speaks mostly Russian and she is not able to help to prepare a presentation. Then child prepares presentation in Russian and Jana translate, translates it into English. We, we also watched, uh, uh, in one of the lessons, we watched a parable uh, movie. The, the movie was in Russian language, but it did have English subtitles. So, uh, we were able again to address both the children who know and understand Russian and children who who can read English and the subtitles were you know slow enough that everyone at that age group was able to read and we also would stop and discuss if there was some misunderstandings or questions so we'd stop and discuss what was just uh, shown to us and what's the point of the, the lesson so we, we can kind of go along and we have not had any troubles or issues as far as understanding or, or disliking. Mm -hmm. So it was always peaceful. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, so it's probably one of the main things to prepare as uh, Orthodox Christians, right? The main school, you know, reason to be in the goal. So is that maybe like, you know, when we have, before the church school starts, we have those like, choir, um, uh, groups that right, they learn some stuff. Now we're starting to have um, the readers, right? Groups. So is that maybe more like to try to really, that, that the last group maybe really, really to participate in the actual life of the, uh, you know, like services, service life of the church? I mean, you know what I mean? Like, um, like, I know my son is getting ready to, he goes to altar, he serves, but, you know, I would like him to maybe be more prone to have, to know how to read, you know, maybe not in Slovenian, but in English. Yeah, as far as I know, readers training, it's for adults, right? But I maybe suppose it should if someone be. younger wanted to participate, we wouldn't, uh, you know, we wouldn't turn them away. As long as they're able to sit quietly, most of the adults can sit quietly, not all, but most. And uh, if they can be like that, then then they will be welcome. <laughs> Maybe it should be more kind of you know push for that. You know what I mean? To prepare them a little bit for more service. Ah, uh, 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 okay, I see. Because that's the hardest so part. To them. Yeah, following the aggressive rate, this goes. He started having groups, uh, which is separate from church school mm -hmm. group for so the outer mm -hmm. service. Then in the beginning, it was the bell ringing group and uh, uh, the choir, kids choir, which uh, leader leads. 
And actually, it's important to mention they are preparing our kids. Uh, they are preparing for this <coughs> literature. And this is exactly what we are talking about. Where only kids will serve. Uh, will they will be the main people to serve there. Boys should serve in the altar, and girls will sing. And but <coughs> the ideal time that only kids will will sing during the service. So it, this is exactly a practical location. Because um, we're kind of trying to grow our uh, warriors, right? If anything happens, we don't have church anymore, or we go underground, right? They need to learn, they need to know what to do yeah. to continue this. Right? Yeah, and this is why we ask uh, parishioners to be patient with kids. If they are noisy during the service, we prefer them having them noisy here than uh, when it's uh, silent and they are somewhere outside, not with us. I think the classes that we have before the church school really, um, I, I hope they strengthen the church school. I don't really see it as separate per se. Uh, I, I think it's just one overall effort. So I, I think it's really a very um, an important effort and we, we hope that people will participate. We try to give, you, give the children something that adds value so that they, they learn something that will be useful for them as they grow and, and a way that they can engage with the church, whether that be through ringing bells, through singing, uh, through serving in the altar. Um, th these are all ways that the children can engage with the church and it's important that they have that opportunity so that they, the more they're engaged, the more they will persist. And the better chance you will have for your grandchildren to be in the church as well. Any other questions for Lilia? All right, well, let's thank Lilia for taking her time.